and we are recording. Alright, this recording will very quickly, briefly talk about how to set up a traditional uh, Cessna 172 for ILS approach at Manassas uh, Regional. ILS runway 16 left and uh, that is not the correct chart that I'm showing on screen. Neither is this. Oh my goodness. So, how to get the chart? I'm just going to Google KHEF 16 left sky vector like this right sky vector provides uh, details about the airport and charts I'm gonna scroll all the way down until we see all, a bunch of PDFs and I click on this that says 16 left so the thing to remember is that the localizer is 109.1 and I want to put this on nav 1 right because the traditional um, gauges they call this steam gauges for, for some reason the traditional gauges are Nav one can can do ILS. That's because the Nav two display. So, back to my Microsoft Flight Simulator D. The Nav two display. This is the Nav two display. Only shows left and right. It will not show you glide slope. Whereas the Nav one display has a glide slope and a uh, localizer, meaning left right gauge. All right. So it's time to set that up. So. Here's your comm stack. Hmm, why does it look like it's... Is this better? Yeah, so your comm stack. This this top part is comms 1, I'm assuming. And the bottom part is comms 2. So really, I just want to make sure that uh, localizer is 109.1. So notice that when I switch when I'm twisting a knob it's the comms frequency that gets adjusted so I'm just gonna push this button here and now this is highlighted over here and now I can switch the localizer frequency and uh, the big knob is for big numbers which is before the decimal point so I tuning that to 109 -er. then the small knob I will just twist that and you twist by using the scroll button on your mouse alright so I, I have now tuned to 109 -er point one. I'm gonna switch to active Oh, and you saw this bar has just moved, yeah? So this means we are too far low, which makes sense because we're already at the airport. And we are too far to the left, which makes sense because we're on the ramp, which is looking at runway 16, we're, we're on its left. So that's already a good sign that you're on the right track. And there you have it. That's all you need to do to set up for ILS uh, approach. Um, the other things that you might have seen me set up an aircraft for is normally autopilot uh, set up but that's a different thing altogether so just just by this um, you're all set for ILS and uh, in, the, in the next video perhaps I'll catch you guys in the air and you can see how these needles move as we fly from base turn to final and touchdown I think I have not mentioned something right yes and that is you gotta make sure that on the uh, nav 1 you, sh you see this nav light up because you could be in GPS mode navigating to an airport you must remember to switch to nav right so that's that's one thing to uh, that's a that's a gotcha and of course another gotcha is failure to uh, set barometric pressure uh, in real life you would tune into ATIS that is the automatic traffic information system I think you would tune to ATIS and ATIS will tell you what the barometric pressure is but uh, in Microsoft Flight Simulator a shortcut is to just press B B for Bravo See, so that was a difference of 200 feet right there. Okay, see you guys on approach.